this trip because he heard he could go to the wonton spot, right? Is that what you asked, Soupy? 35 years, still good? All right, so we've been keeping this a secret for over a year. And look, it's actually finished, unlike most of the stuff we do. It drove here. gonna drive out of here we hope so anyway for the past year Subi has been hiding away in one of our secret little studios building this with Alex Graham literally from the ground up like from zero to this so anyway enjoy the series on how we got here but how did we get here let's rewind and try again What's up everyone, Corey Hosford here. You may have recognized me from daily transmission episodes where I've nearly died. You may have seen me as the Chaos Commander at the Hoonigan Burnyard. But the one thing that you don't know about me, which in my opinion is the most important, is that I'm actually the biggest video game nerd at it's Hoonigan. Me. No! Now this project starts way back in a different video game. If you remember Forza Horizon back in 2017, we released our first Hoonigan DLC car pack. Which in the same video game, they also released the Warthog. Now that really doesn't have much to do with how we got here, but it's still useful, worthless information. Anyways, when it came time to launching Halo Infinite, our friends over at Xbox thought it'd be a great idea to build an actual functioning Warthog. But instead of just making a scaled replica as they have done before in the past, they actually wanted to make something that would shred. So they called us up. Microsoft wanted something that could exceed 100 miles an hour, that could jump over 100 feet, that can climb any type of rocks or rough terrain and have the same handling and driving characteristics that you would actually experience in Halo Infinite. But before we jump in the build, if you're sitting there wondering to yourself, what the hell is a Warthog? Just peep this quick info segment. The Warthog is a nickname for the M12 Force Application Light Reconnaissance Vehicle, M12 FAV. This fictional armored fighting vehicle was conceived for the hugely popular Halo video game franchise. This anti-infantry, fast attack vehicle serves as the United Nations Space Command Armed Forces primary joint light tactical ground vehicle. The Warthog is a fast and maneuverable light reconnaissance vehicle with all-wheel drive, active all-wheel steering, and a 12-liter hydrogen-injected internal combustion engine powering an infinitely variable transmission. The armor plating is comprised of ballistic polycarbonate and carbon nanotubes, built upon a titanium frame and able to withstand heavy machine gunfire, improvised explosive devices, and provide limited protection from plasma weapons. It can be crewed by three people, a driver, an armed passenger, and a gunner who mans the 12.7mm three-barreled rear-mounted machine gun. One of the Halo designers thinks the Warthog is the real reason Halo became an action game. He added that in some ways, Halo is the story of the Warthog and the universe we built to drive it around in. Master Chief would approve. Thing. Did you tell everybody where we are? No, uh, no. you want to tell them? Uh, well, we're over here at the Peterson, and they happen to have a full-size interpretation of the Warthog here. Woo, look at this bad boy right here. So one of the main reasons I came here today was just to look at... Dan, I suck at this, dude. One of the reasons Soupy came today is to look at all the design dimensions and all kinds of crazy stuff that he can't say on camera because he's bad at this. But luckily <laughs> for us, he is an amazing builder who's really good at that kind of stuff. So he's got his little measuring tape and he's just geesh, 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 checking it all out so that we can get this Halo Infinite Warthog as close as possible to a spec. Let me see how thick this, this is, this is another thing. Yeah, this side panel, remember we were always arguing about the side panel? Yo, it's 16 inches thick. Sorry, we gotta be here in a minute because these are all the questions I had before. No, this is all like, I don't know what, what the design question is. I, I don't know like how this comes in. Like, see, remember what I was saying? And they don't have the, the bar. There's no bar here. Look at this winch. There's no way we're going to be able to replicate that winch. There's no such technology. Well, if it makes you feel better, I've played all the Halos and I've never used the winch. Okay. So. <laughs> If 
we had all the time in the world, we could have started this Warthog project from scratch, but we figured it'd be easier to work from a rolling chassis that has already been designed to be an off-road beast, even if we decide to completely tear it down. A Warthog chassis just showed up, and this is kind of an accidental buy. I, I'm going to have you explain, Gerald, what this is and where it came from and all this other stuff. Hi, I'm Gerald Lee with Savvy Off-Road. The chassis is, is a Kevin Carroll chassis from Red Dot Engineering. It's one of the last ones built before he passed away in a plane crash. It's got four-wheel steer, it's got full hydraulic steering for both front and rear. You want to show them how that four-wheel steering works? See, which way are we going? That way. Well, you got the... Look at that. I okay. can't imagine that's good at high speed. No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when you guys put a big motor in this thing, scary fast, it'll be fun. Well, I'm gonna start tearing into this thing. Thank you again. Thanks. Thank you. First problem I already see is it is too narrow. This being a rock crawler, there's not a lot of cabin space. So this has to be cut right here, 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 here. Basically turning this thing into a convertible. Yo, here's the thing. There's so much stress on this thing right now, it's just pinched my saw blade. It's stuck. You guys should not be cutting this. That took a heck of a long time. Jose! What up? Jose is gonna make some control arms. The extended control arms we need. Look how thick that is. You I've what? never welded something that thick. Did you see the bevel that that, that thing takes? Oh. It's crazy. Look, look at the bevel. Look at that thing. She's gonna be longer and fatter by the time we're done today. vehicle again. Yeah. So we're going to be done. We lengthened it. So we had to choose the new lower and the new upper. Five inches longer this way, five inches longer that way. We widened it, push the seat out. Damn, looks good. Hard to snack with a mask on. Yeah. You no. Know, it definitely cuts down on snacking. You got to remember step one. Have you actually tried to put something through your mouth? Yeah. Not realizing you have a mask on? Looking good, suits. Yeah, man. Hey, looking pretty good over here, guys. You don't look like you've ever played games. Okay. I'm gonna fire up Halo for you. I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna help. It's basic science. You're building a Warhog. We need to see the Warhog. You don't have to watch, but if you want to build this correctly, you should. I'm helping you, science. Warhog, Warhog. Research, right? Research and development, Research. it's step one of everything. All right, do this with me now. This is step one of building Warhouse. What is it?
does that have to do with anything? What does that have to do with anything? It has everything to do with everything. I got one of those. Which one? One of those guys. You don't have one of those. Guys. Yeah, they're like this big. I've seen them. I've been measuring him for like the past week. I'm trying to figure out how tall he is. Oh shit, there it is. This is the original. This is the original Warhawk. Halo Combat Evolved. Obviously, this thing has developed quite a bit. It's a little different from the sketches we got, but well, yeah. This is V1. This is 2000. Dude, 2000? Four, I feel like. 2000? I don't even know. Oh, I don't know. It's early 2000. So, this is the original. This is, uh, this is history right here. That's really cool. Would you just look at it? Drive it. Just look at it. Look at this thing. Are you jumping it? Yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be you in the back. Yeah, buddy. Check this out. Four wheel steering. Yeah, we got that. Check this out. Check this out. Check this out. We can jump over the. Oh. <laughs> what are you saying? No, no, that. Uh, that was that was something else I was showing you. You want to try it? No. Try to drive the Warthog. No. Let me know if you need any more help. I'm happy to keep helping. In case you're wondering, we did do a lot more than your traditional tape measure jobs and guesstimations at the Peterson Museum. We spent a lot of time on calls with the developers and designers of the Warthog in the Halo Infinite series. They were able to provide us with loads of information and details and blueprints of the Warthog and things that we could take out of the digital world and bring it into the real world. Are there any points you guys want to hit specifically? What are, what are, you, what are you guys looking for? We made a bunch of Warthogs. Frankly, we've made them different sizes, different uh, from different versions of the game uh, for different purposes, and we find that we get the best results by working with with partners who have their own vision and and have their own idea about what it needs to do, what function it needs to serve. So, what would you guys say is the most important part of the Warhog we're building? Like, what needs to embody what you guys want the most. This is my opinion, but I think with you guys, it would be off-road and on-road performance okay. would be the most important thing. Um, we don't need the four-wheel steering and all the things that are fictionally correct, because then it literally makes it impossible to drive. Too late. It's too late. We already got four-wheel steering, so. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't easy, yeah. but we did it. Audio, obviously, as well, but I think starting with the V8 is great. That will, that will almost certainly make it sound more like a hog. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's the most important part for us is sound. It's got to sound great. Do you guys want to see what we have so far? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yep, that's going to be a hog. <laughs> <laughs> We're headed in the right direction. We've got the light bar, the back down bars, the big pillars on the sides. Yep. I mean, like without the body, if you took the body off of that render, it, it would look something like yeah. this, I feel like. So, so that, that is exciting to see that we're actually headed in the right direction. And this is, uh, this is ex an exciting project for us. We really want to see this thing come through. I mean, for me, I'm a big lover of the Halo game and Soupy is just a big lover of making cool things. So uh, <laughs> you bring it all together and hopefully we come out of this with a really fun, capable vehicle that can do everything and uh, helps you guys show people that the Halo Warhog is real. On the next episode, Soupy and the gang dig into what is going to be the best power plant option for the Warthog. And if I was going to give you guys a hint, let's just say it rhymes with Boonicorn. And since the whole goal was to build a Warthog that is capable of shredding, I want to know in the comments below, what should we do with this thing first? Jose, quick question. How much of this is your work compared to Soupy? All What's of it. He lied. Soupy just comes in, walks well for, well for five everybody minutes, knows. and then he takes off. I did this whole thing by myself. At the end, once this is finished, he's gonna, he's gonna come in out of nowhere and he's gonna say, Look what I built! <laughs>